question of dinosaurs all the time. Consider dragons. You know, we see dragon legends in cultures all over the world. We find petroglyphs, you know, like cave drawings and etchings. And many of these are images of dragons and, and creatures that we would call dinosaurs today. The word dinosaur didn't exist until 1841. So before 1841, very often the word dragon would have been used. Dragon is more of an overarching term. It would include flying reptiles, sea reptiles, as well as things like dinosaurs. Now when it comes to evidence of dinosaurs and man living at the same time, believe it or not, we actually have an immense amount. When we actually look at ancient histories from various cultures, we get very detailed descriptions. Those are creatures that today, in our modern world, we would call dinosaurs. In Genesis, we're told that on day six, God created the beasts of the earth and everything that creepeth upon the earth. This would, of course, include dinosaurs. In the past, dinosaurs were simply known as dragons. Even as late as the early 1900s, dictionaries described dragons as now rare and a huge serpent. Not only do we find dinosaurs in cave drawings, carvings of figurines, and even in cultural legends from the not too distant past, but the Bible speaks descriptively of creatures that sound like dinosaurs. In the book of Job, God tells Job to behold the behemoth, a creature Job would have known. In fact, God specifically says that he made the behemoth along with mankind and describes it as having a tail that sways like a cedar tree and bones as strong as iron. He's so big that a raging river is nothing to him. The description of this massive creature fits the huge sauropod dinosaurs we know from the fossil record. The Bible describes in great detail a creature that sounds just like a dinosaur thousands of years before paleontologists would rediscover and rename them. My daughter came back from her kindergarten class when she was younger. She brought home a book that said that dinosaurs lived a hundred million years ago. That is just an assertion. They're just saying it. They didn't observe this. You can't repeat this. It is man, fallible, imperfect men who separate man from dinosaurs by somewhere in the neighborhood of about 65 million years now. You either start with what God has to say or you start with what man has to say. God, who has always been there, he's perfect, he's infallible. He's the one who says that people and dinosaurs walk the earth together. And a lot of people kind of scoff at that. But you know what, you look back in history, nobody scoffed at that until recent times when people started to buy into this concept of millions and billions of years. In 2005, Mary Schweitzer, a paleontologist and evolutionist, made the first popularized discovery of soft tissues in a dinosaur bone, which include blood vessels and cells, DNA and proteins, all of which decay quickly. Mary Schweitzer herself said, this flies in the face of everything we understand about how tissues and cells degrade. I can't explain it, to be honest. Mary can't explain it, and neither can her colleagues who cling to the evolutionary paradigm. To illustrate the problem, let's travel back to the early 1700s, a time when biblical catastrophism was the accepted geological view. If people then found a dinosaur bone, or dragon bone, as they may have called it, with soft tissue and remnants of blood still in it, would they be confused? Of course not. They would simply conclude this was a creature that died and was buried during or after the flood within the past few thousand years. Now let's fast forward to today. Would people be confused to find the same thing in a dinosaur bone? Of course, many people would, because the evidence we find doesn't match the evolutionary time scale we've been conditioned to believe. Genesis, Paradise Lost.